What the fuck is this bullshit? Okay, this really pisses me off. Today we might be able to break a record and go at least one level without anyone dying. It is a very ambitious goal, but I think we might be able to achieve it. Especially since on this map there is literally no way for us to kill the people. Side note, if you hear any noise or shouting in the background, I do apologize, but the neighbor's spoiled daughter seems to be shouting at the, her parents from the top of her lungs. It's honestly quite annoying because it's really loud, weird and obnoxious, but also it's slightly not loud enough that I can make out the individual words. So I have no idea what they're arguing about. <laughs> But it feels loud enough that I would hear every word. And I literally hear every word, I just don't know what the words are. Anyway, Karma has finally bit this manager in the ass because all his email and data on his personal computer got wiped. How does this keep happening to me? Well, Karma, we need to recreate this multiplication table so he can look stuff up. First observation is that I was wrong. There is a way for us to die by picking up those label cubes at the sides next to the walls because those do in fact explode. But I did say I wanted to break our record so I'm not gonna try and pick them up on purpose. Anyway, our goal is simple. Just fill out this multiplication table. Now the slow way of doing this would be to isolate the person on the left because it's the only one who has no one on the left side of him. Maybe do the same with the right side person and they would just keep going and this person knows he's in the one column, this knows it's the nine column. The other people would then be waiting to see a number being written on any of those cubes next to them and then they would know which column they are in. The other way of doing this is to make them go all the way up. So let's try and apply the logic to all of those people. So isolate the ones on the sides, they are gonna start going up and the rest of the people are going to base their location on the data on the data cubes that these have written. Too much talking, let me just show you. Now I have written a code that I believe should work, but before I share that I wanted to see the optional challenges. First one is to use 11 or fewer commands, that's impossible. And the second is complete in 53 seconds. That shouldn't be too hard. Now what I've done is this. First of all, the people that are next to a wall take a step up and then they all take another step up. So they are all going to be standing on the bottom row of data cubes. Now, isolate the left person, which is the only one who hasn't got a worker to the left of him, and he, or in this case, she is going to be in the column one. So memory one is the column number. The rightmost person is in column nine. Then we need to figure out the other columns. These two on the sides can start walking up, filling out the data. Now the other people should look at the data cubes to their left or to the right and see what values there are. That's how they will determine their column. So this lady here should see a nine to the left of her. As soon as she sees that, she's gonna know she's in column two. This person should see 81 to the right of him. And since the speed of those should be the same from both sides, there's no reason for this person to look left. So if memory one is a zero, meaning you don't know which column you're in, you should check the values next to you. And if you're still not sure where you are, you repeat this whole process. This could be a little more optimized, but that would mean we would use more jumps. So I'm not doing that. And technically we could put those if statements into the else branches, but then we would probably be too deep. We'll deal with that stuff later. After that, they know which columns they are in, so they should do stuff. In memory two, 
we have the row number, which is initialized at 9, that's at this bottom row, and in memory 3, we are storing the result, which is memory 1, meaning the column, times the row. Once they've got that, they just need to pick up the data cube, write the result, drop it again and step up. Then, once they've done the whole grid and they are here, they're no longer standing on a data cube, so they should just end their program. Otherwise, they subtract one from their row number and repeat this whole process again. It is a surprise, but I'm really fairly confident that this is gonna work first try. Let's try it. So these on the sides have started calculating 981, that's correct. And now these two should notice these numbers and they started calculating as well. 9, 8, this should be 7, 81, 72, please do 64. I mean 63, obviously, what an idiot. <laughs> so that's correct. Now let's speed this up and you see that they are very nicely working their way up. 34 commands took us a long time. Not great, even worse, but we've completed the level. Now let's try some optimization. Let's first try the time challenge. And first I just want to see how much faster is this all gonna be if I just put a few nice jumps in the code. So the code is now even more of a mayhem, as you see here. <laughs> Many jumps added, but perhaps it might be a little faster. I'm just afraid it's gonna be maybe two seconds faster and not much more. So speed it up again and let's see. 77 seconds. How much was the previous one? Oh, 89. I see. So that's not bad. 12 seconds. But we've still got a long way to go. I've got an idea. What I've decided to do is not only initialize the column they are in, but also the first number they are going to be writing on the data queue. Because once we've got that, we no longer need to remember which row they are in. We just need to take the current number that they've written and subtract the column from that, meaning we've just cut the number of calculations in half. Let's again speed this up and see whether this actually helps. 68 seconds. That's great. And now I'm gonna add the jumps as they were before and maybe we've got it. Great, now the code is literally unreadable, but is it fast? 59 seconds, so there's still some room for optimization. We only propagate the column numbers from the right side and the left side. What if we tried taking this lady and this guy and isolating them as well and propagating the changes from the middle too. So the lady has a worker to the left of her and also to the top right. So she sets her column number to 4. The first value is 36, which means she doesn't need her if statement here anymore. Also, this guy to the left of her is going to see her number first. So don't check if there's 18 to the left, but check if there is 36 to the right instead. And I've done the same for this guy and this lady here. So now, if we run the code again, these on the sides should be the first ones to write, and these two as well. But it doesn't work. Why not? That's because I made them take a couple steps first. So I've changed the code, and they now map the environment. And as you see, these four people have started to move first. I messed it up again. Now this has to work, come on. So again, map your environment. All move there. These four people have started working already and then the rest is just behind them. Speed this up. This has to be faster. 47 seconds, six seconds to spare. Awesome. So ridiculously easy. Obviously not. <laughs> Now to do the size challenge. I think instead of editing all this, it might be easier to actually start from scratch. I've rewritten the code, so now they go all the way up, read the labels and then start working their way down. Let's try running that. 
just to see if this works. Working absolutely beautifully. St what the fuck is this bullshit? Okay, this really pisses me off. This code, look at this. This code took me like two minutes to write with all the knowledge I've already gained from the past failures. And it's still faster, much faster than the desired solution. And what did I come up with originally? This shit. Wow. Okay, great. Well, people learn from their mistakes. Anyway, this is one command too long. What I think we can do is instead of them walking all the way to these cubes next to the wall, so checking if above you there isn't a wall, keep stepping up. We could say if above you there isn't a data cube with a number. So let's say if above you there isn't a zero and let's say below you there is a zero. So that's only this row, which means they stop here and we don't need this extra step down after that. No, okay, that doesn't work because this if statement is wrong. Okay, so for some reason I can just say if above you there is a zero. So even this person who has no data cube above him says there's a zero. So I can just run this, they walk all the way up and then they are wrong because I forgot to say memory one is now the cube above you. So again, it doesn't work, great. Why not? Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I forgot that these people take an extra step every time anyway. <laughs> Took me 10 minutes, but I think I figure out the if statement for them to find out if they are standing on this spot. Surprisingly difficult. Anyway, until above you there either is a data cube with zero or there isn't a data cube above you, you keep walking. There. They have gone to this row and they have set memory one to their column number, memory three to memory one, because they are starting at times one and then step down, pick up, write the result, drop the cube, and result plus column. This is gonna work beautifully. That's it. A flawless multiplication table. 11 commands, 47 seconds still. Meaning we've completed both optional challenges using this code. I'm really proud of myself. That being said, I am at 59 minutes right now. Not great. And for sure, I'm not looking forward to editing this. <laughs> I'm just glad I don't have to ask for any help. And please don't give me such hard time in the comments for, for messing this up so badly. Maybe just a little bit.